I'm here with Sherelle Mendenhall, a Republican running for the U.S. Senate seat. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So what makes you the best candidate to run against Catherine Cortez Masto? I believe I'm the best candidate because I'm running at this with a completely different perspective. Uh, my life has been lived in serving and uh, seeing a solution, like seeing a, a problem and being the solution. Uh, a quick story, I had a friend in Los Angeles, he was a single dad and he had two little boys and he was struggling, he couldn't get a job and he needed money and I was like, okay, I wanna help him but if I just give him money right now, it's a Band-Aid. Uh, so in the long run, I ended up creating a company and it provided hundreds of jobs. So it was like this one need that I saw and I created the solution. So for me, I see a problem, I see division. I see that uh, we need someone to bring people together. So I'm the best person because I, I'm that person and I don't quit and I, I will get the job done. And speaking of bringing people together, um, divided right now, a yeah. lot of division, what would you do to reach across the aisle? Um, there's a lot of things that I want to do to reach across the aisle, but you know something specifically that I always uh, show is whenever there is disaster. So I've gone and volunteered in Houston, in a bunch of different states, in Alabama, um, and whenever there is an issue, you don't ask what party they are. You literally go to help. And so, like, I want to lead with that. You guys, we are humans. We are a people that need help. I mean, you look at the pandemic; it has absolutely devastated small business. It has collapsed so many different things. There's, uh, you know, suicide rates that have risen. So I want us to look at this as a human issue, not let's do this, like a party issue. Speaking of the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, are you vaccinated? I am not vaccinated. Um, and if I may, so when I was born, uh, I was actually an identical twin and they ended up having to cut out half of my liver, one of my adrenal glands, and my immune system has been compromised since I was little. So to add things, anytime I would get shots, I would get so sick, I'd be completely laid out. So for me with um, the limited uh, kind of research at this point of the long term and what it can you know, do to someone, I have chosen not to get it. Um, I'm as safe as possible, um, but that's my personal choice. What is your stance on others who may not be in the same health situation mm. as you as far as getting the vaccine? So uh, we're in America and I believe in our freedom. I believe that we have the freedom to choose and that's what it should be. Um, I do believe in uh, taking care of people and making sure that we don't compromise one another. But in all honesty, we cannot like impose something that should be a right. Do you uh, support or oppose uh, additional stimulus bills being passed for COVID-19 relief? <sighs> That's a, a layered question. So for me, I, I feel what's happening and since it's been so long, uh, we're perpetuating some laziness. There are companies, there are businesses that aren't able to open because they're so short staffed. And they're like, okay, well, we're gonna close on Friday and you know Tuesday on some of their big days because of the fact they can't find enough people to work. So in all honesty, I think that what we need to do is actually be putting those jobs out there. We need to cut off the additional uh, stimulus and get people back to work because people with a purpose, uh, doing something positive in their life, which is working and bringing home money, should be what we're doing. So I think we did you know, give some stimulus. We gave some help and some aid when it was needed, um, but now it's time to get back to work. How concerned are you that we will have many evictions here in Southern Nevada? And what should be done? Um, I'm very concerned. Um, but there's, again, there's many layers to that. So the people who were, you know, the owners of the buildings, they're struggling as well. You know, they're like, I, I haven't been able to take rent, you know, from these people for this duration, and now I'm in trouble. So, uh, you know, there were a lot of stimulus and a lot of, you know, aid that was given. And I do hope that they're able to put that towards what it should have been, you know, to pay for their rent, because that's what you should be doing. You shouldn't just stop. Um, and what should be done? <laughs> I think it, it, it is, it's like, America, we need to go back to work and work hard and do what it takes to put that roof over our head. Um, there's a lot of programs out there that are actually nonprofit, not government related, that do give aid and assistance to people who do need help in that, you know, meantime, until they can get that job that sustains them. What's your stance on immigration and do you support building a wall? Um, I believe that there is a great process for people to come into this country and that needs to be adhered to. I do believe we need to build a wall. We're at, you know, the last number I saw was over 700% as far as, you know, refugees coming 
to the border. Uh, we have drugs coming over. We have crime. And uh, as, as a people group, we're, we're trying to take care of our own right now, the people who have come in here illegally. And it's not enough. We're like, like you just mentioned earlier, you know, about stimulus and giving money, uh, you know, the implications of people going out on the streets. So I believe we need to protect our border, have a process, adhere to that. And then we can start being stronger as a country. And then we can help and give aid to people that are in trouble. What's your stance on DACA? DACA, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with DACA. Okay, we'll, we'll move on. Okay. Um, uh, Nevada is more than 80% land controlled by the federal government. Um, what would you like to be seen done as far as that land? Um, well, uh, I, I, in, in all honesty, just as far as like what I've done my research on, like my, my expertise is really on like the water issue right now, so I haven't kind of done a deep dive into the federal you know land and uh, how it's being used so i don't want to you know misspeak in this term um, but the one area that i've really been focusing on right now is our water levels and our allocation and things not changing since 1947 and now we're sitting here and um, some experts are stating that in 2035 we're going to be out of water so you know with that said like whether it's expansion bringing in you know new new jobs to Nevada, I believe we first need to talk about the water issues and then we can talk about the land and how we use it. What's the most important issue for you? Um, our freedom. I would say that our freedom is the biggest thing and when I you know, kind of uh, was grappling about running for US Senate, I was like, what am I going to do differently than anyone else? And um, I, I see just so many things flying on social media and I want to build yet another metaphoric wall around our rights and our privileges. Uh, for instance, I believe the government is to protect and to serve, just like uh, you know, our, our police. Um, before, phones were only in our, tele you know, in our homes, they weren't in cars. And so later, when they were causing accidents, that's when they needed to step in and put a law in place to protect us from, you know, not driving recklessly. I think it's, you know, the, the same thing now. We need to build metaphoric walls around things we didn't know we needed to protect. For instance, I, I love the role of a mom, a she, a woman. I don't want those rights taken away in our school system, education, in government. I don't mind anybody coming up with whatever you'd like to be called in addition. But I want to make sure my rights to be called a she, a her, a woman are protected. Uh, the right to, to assemble, churches, you know, coming together. I'm, I love going to church. And I think that people need hope in a time like this. How do you feel about the current uh, Miss Nevada winner being transgender? Um, so for me, uh, something that's really important is that we adhere by rules. So throughout all of history, you know, the pageant has had in their rules that you need to be a natural born woman. So I, I don't know that that was changed beforehand. So I really think that that should be something that's looked at, um, you know, because that means that the person who did win, uh, obviously they thought that person was the right person, but we need to go back to the rules that were set specifically to run in this pageant, that you be a natural born woman. Um, you're a supporter of former President Donald Trump. Um, why? Um, so actually, you know, the first time he ran, um, I was getting, you know, so much information from both sides of what he was. You would hear in the media, you know, that he hated women, that he was against this, you know, so many different things. So what I did is um, I researched and I was like, okay, what are his policies? What does he stand on? What is he running on? And so that's where I first made my decision to support that because I believed in his policies and the things that he stood for. Um, and then fast forward to the next time, and he had done so much for our economy. He had followed through on a lot of those things. It wasn't just um, broken promises. So for me, uh, that's why I stood for President Trump. You mentioned his policies. As a woman, some of the things he said, do they offend you? Um, I, I really don't get offended, you know, that often because so many people can say so many things. I've been called so many things even since I started in U.S. Senate. I don't believe offense has a place in this for, for my personal. It's more about what are you doing for the people? What are you doing for the country? Um, he also has elevated a lot, of, a lot of women to great positions. So um, I, I like to stand on that. Um, what should be done about inflation? Um, I. There's a lot of, okay. <laughs> I, I feel like I could talk about this for a long time. 
Um, just kind of taking a look at, at what's happening in the blocking and uh, whether it's, uh, you know, with a uh, climate and things along those lines and the implications that are happening uh, to gas prices. We need to do a deep dive and get to the root issue. Um, there are things, so for me personally, I was starting a new company and everyone's like, yeah, it's horrible to get it made in America. You have to go overseas. So I believe we actually need to build an infrastructure here. Take a look at the things that are missing. We have cars that aren't being able to be made because we can't get the chips over here. So we need to strategically take a look at each area that we're missing here in the United States and actually give tax incentives to bring them back here to be self-sustainable. And that means in crops, in manufacturing, that also provides us jobs. So uh, I think that that is really going to have an impact on uh, all the inflation that's happening. Um, tell me about your business. Mm -hmm. So uh, my first one uh, is a lead expo talent agency. And that's the one I started because uh, I saw a need. Uh, I also had been invited to work at a couple of um, events. And they're like, OK, we want eight more Shirelles you know, to show up. And so I started bringing my siblings at first, you know, my sisters. And then I was like, OK, I, I can you know, build a business around this. Um, and uh, within one year, it was, it was hard. You know, it was, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I was learning as I went. But within one year, we were nationwide. And uh, we were providing hundreds of jobs, you know, throughout the years. And it, it's been amazing because sometimes I'll look intrinsically and I'm like, wow, like this was just a need that I saw. And I was able to put everything that I am into it and to build it to today. And some people will call me like, oh my gosh, you're Shirelli. And I get letters. So like one of them impacted me so much in the first year when it's like you're paying yourself pennies, um, you know, to, to build a company. And she said, because of you, I'm able to focus on my school and not have to work my juice job, you know, every single night. I can work one job a month and be able to just focus on school. And so for me, that was like that additional thing. Hey, keep going. It's going to impact people. Don't, don't, don't let, you know, the, the lack of moving forward hinder you. But then right after that, we just kept continuously growing and expanding. So it was pretty powerful and I'm proud. So when was that business created and where? So I actually created it out in Los Angeles. Uh, the year I actually, I think it was about five years ago. So I don't, don't misquote me, but it was about five years ago. Um, and I started it in, uh, in LA and then I closed it and reopened it here in Nevada. When did you reopen it here? Uh, just this past year. So when I moved here, I wasn't sure, you know, what was going to go on with the pandemic, things along those lines, um, because obviously events were no longer in existence. So I, I reopened that here and uh, we had um, our first event back was out in Florida. And I actually have a meeting right after this that we're going to do a bunch more demos. So I'm excited. OK, great. Anything else you feel like people should know about you personally? Personally, um, I think that something that's important is to not judge a book by its cover. You know, I, I, up until this point, so many people are kind of just berating and kind of seeing from the outside instead of taking the time to get to know me. Um, I, I'm multi-layered. Uh, I also know how to kick off the heels, throw on some boots, and get some stuff done. So whether it's building, I'm going to be in there demolishing or, or, or putting, you know, walls up. I'll do whatever it takes. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing to understand me. And I love people. I love our country. And I want to bring hope to a place where I see so many people don't have it. So for people who will watch this interview, mm -hmm. um, they may be surprised that you weren't familiar with DACA. It's yeah. something that affects many people Correct. here. Um, what do you want to address about that? Do you think you maybe have more work to do to be taken seriously and, and jump into the race? Um, so I look at it as this. You know, when I went to this, I knew that I wasn't going to know everything about every single uh, you know, question that I'm asked. And uh, I see it as I have people around me for the right reason. I'm going to appoint them. They're going to advise me. And when it comes time for me to make a decision on that, I am going to personally do that deep dive to make sure I'm making the right decision for the people. Um, taking me seriously, uh, I believe that you know, my past shows that I, I'm a get it done kind of person. So when that scenario arises, I will address it and do the right thing for the people and it's the same thing in business. You know, you, you don't have someone who specifically your tech person doesn't know everything about ops or sales. You have individual people for individual slots for a reason. And so uh, I also don't want to um, not answer something that I don't know anything about, you know, in essence to like uh, deceive the viewer. 
Okay. Thank you so much for joining yes, us. Yes. Thank you so much.